Five Most Brutal Acts of Revenge in History Revenge has always been a very basic part of the human emotional spectrum. Poems, stories and movies have been written based on revenge. But that's the thing, it's all fictional, right? No one really sits around for years, meticulously planning grisly revenge, waiting for the opportune moment to go all ape shit, do they? Well, that's where we say, think again. 1. A young Julius Caesar was once kidnapped by pirates. After paying off the ransom, Caesar raised an army, captured the pirates and had them crucified. The story goes that 25-year-old Julius Caesar was sailing on the Aegean Sea and he was captured by pirates. At first they asked for 20 pieces of silver as ransom, but Caesar, who was insulted by the demand, asked them to increase the ransom, as befit his stature. The pirates increased the ransom to 50 pieces. He also promised that he would capture and crucify them. Caesar's associates were able to raise the sum and subsequently freed him. And this is where Caesar's revenge began. After being freed, Caesar raised a small force and went to the island where the pirates set camp. Unfortunately, for them, the pirates didn't heed to his warnings. Long story short, the pirates were captured and crucified. And Julius Caesar kept his money and his word. 2. King Afonso IV of Portugal stopped his son, Peter I from marrying the woman he loved, going so far as to have her murdered. Later, when Peter became king, he had the assassins killed, ripping their hearts out with his own hands. In 1340 King Afonso IV of Portugal decided to get his son, Peter married to Costanza, the daughter of Juan Manuel, Prince of Valena to seal an alliance. However, along with Costanza, came her lady-in-waiting, Ines de Castro, and yes you guessed it, Prince Peter fell head over heels in love with her. While Costanza herself died in 1345, Ines and Peter's love affair continued. Afonso banished Ines from the court, but Peter refused to marry anyone other than Ines. Having failed at banishment, in 1355 Afonso sent three men to kill Ines, who was decapitated in front of one of her children. Yep, that kinda pushed Peter over the edge. He revolted against his father, but was defeated. Afonso however, died soon after and Peter became king in 1357. He managed to find two of the assassins, held a public trial and had them executed. How, you ask? By ripping their hearts out with his own bare hands. Apparently, it was justice for what they did to his heart. They didn't call him Peter the Just for nothing. 3. Enrico Dandolo was blinded and mocked by the Byzantine Empire and he went to negotiate on behalf of his city. Thirty years later, he led the sack of the empire's capital city. In the beginning of the 12th century, the Western Roman Empire had collapsed, leaving the Byzantine Empire as the only real power in Eastern Europe. During all this, the Republic of Venice proved to be a safe haven during these times of turmoil, until 1171 that is. In that year, the Byzantine government decided to confiscate the properties of all Venetians living in the empire and imprison them. So the Republic appointed Enrico as emissary to talk things over with the empire. That proved to be ineffective, as the Byzantines decided to blind Enrico and continue with their bullying. Thirty years later, and now the Doge of Venice, Enrico Dandolo led the Fourth Crusade all the way to Constantinople to sack the city. The city fell and Enrico had his revenge. Oh, did we mention he was blind and in his nineties? 4. Wrongly accused of being a spy by his friends, Pierre Picard was sent to prison, somehow made a fortune and when he got out of jail, inflicted brutal revenge on the men who sent him there. Pierre Picard was a well-to-do shoemaker in France and soon to be married to his sweetheart. Life was basically set for him. However, three jealous friends, Lupian, Solari and Chaubert, falsely accused him of being an English spy and Pierre was sent to prison. Apparently, while he was there, he befriended a wealthy priest, Father Tori. They became so close, that the priest bequeathed his property to Pierre when he died. When Pierre got out, he got his hands on the money, changed his name and spent ten years plotting his revenge. What was the revenge, you ask? First, Chaubert was murdered and Solari was poisoned. But he left the most brutal punishment for Lupian, who was married to Pierre's former fiancée. 
He tricked Lupian's daughter into marrying a criminal and then had him sent to jail, which caused Lupian's daughter to die of shock. He then manipulated Lupian's son into stealing gold, for which he was arrested, and finally burnt Lupian's restaurant to the ground. Lupian's son was sent to jail and Picard stabbed Lupian to death himself. 5. A Central Asian Empire decided to piss Genghis Khan off by killing the trade emissaries he sent. So he obliterated it. Chances are, you've never heard of the Khwarezmid Empire. That's how effective Genghis Khan's revenge was. In the early 13th century, the Mongol Empire had just gained a border with the Khwarezmid Empire. Most people would think getting a border with the most well-known conquerors of all time would be a bad thing, so when Genghis Khan sent a 500-man caravan to his new neighbors, the Khwarezmid Shah was a little suspicious. The Shah didn't have the benefit of hindsight and captured the 500 men, claiming they were spies. Instead of attacking, Genghis Khan sent three ambassadors, two Mongols and one Muslim, to ensure the 500 men's freedom. Again, the Shah did not respond well. He had the Mongols' heads shaved and the Muslim beheaded. He also ordered the execution of all the 500 men in captivity. And that got Genghis Khan's attention. In less than two years, the Khwarezmid Empire ceased to exist. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe for more.